the left lane in Laram. Nineteen sixty nine Plymouth Roadrunner. And this isn't some run of the mill Roadrunner with a three eighty three because this specific car is an A twelve. That means a four forty six barrel, and don't you dare call it a six pack because that term was reserved for the Dodges. <laughs> this one's a Plymouth, so let's be professional. It's a six barrel. But also with the A12, you got an aluminum intake manifold, higher load valve springs, a fiberglass lift off hood, those black steel wheels. And when those six barrels opened up, you're talking 1,350 CFM flowing into an engine with a compression ratio of 10.5 to one and it was rated 390 horsepower. Actually, the NHRA said it was 410. Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> and 490 pound-feet of torque. And if you're keeping track, that's just as much as a Hemi, but at a lower RPM. There weren't many transmission options available with the A12. You could get a four-speed manual, or like this car, you could get the Torque Flight three-speed automatic. And for the most consistency in drag racing, this is definitely the way to go. Are you worried all that power might destroy the rear end? Eh, don't be. From the factory, this thing came with a Dana 60 rear, and there was only one gear set available. 410. Roadrunners are stripped down cars, so they're fairly light, and the A12 is no different. This one with driver is 3,784 pounds. The Roadrunner A12 was meant to be affordable and Plymouth was very successful in doing that. The base car was 3,083 bucks, that A12 package was another $462, and then the torque flight was 39 bucks. That gives you a grand total of only $3,584 and adjusting for inflation, that's 27,143 bucks today. Being a mid-year release, the A12 is fairly rare and there were only 1,412 built in total. But if you break that down into those hardtop cars with an automatic transmission, that's only 375. Here's where the story of the A12 gets a little bit interesting. Speed and Supercar Magazine tested one of these cars in June of 1969. It had a four-speed manual transmission, and they put Ronnie Socks behind the wheel. After some fine-tuning and removing the air cleaner, he was able to run 12.91 seconds at 111 miles per hour. When they asked him how he did it, he replied, How did I do it? Easy. I never used the clutch. Let's check out that opponent. 1969 Chevrolet Chevelle Copo. And as a refresher course, Copo stood for Central Office Production Order, and this was the system used to order fleet vehicles or police vehicles or whatever you wanted as long as you knew what boxes to check. In this case, a car with a 12-bolt rear, a beefy transmission, and an absolutely monstrous engine that was otherwise unavailable in a Chevelle. Specifically, a V8 with 427 cubic inches, and even though we all love a few extra inches, this one is even more special than that. We're talking an L72, that means solid lifter cam, aluminum intake manifold, Holly 780, 4 bolt mains, and a compression ratio from the factory of 11 to 1. Chevrolet said these cars were making 425 horsepower, I'm guessing it's a little bit more than that and 460 pound-feet of torque. A four-speed manual was available, but just like the Roadrunner, this one's got a three-speed automatic. Being a GM, oh yeah, it's a turbo 400. Out back, 410 gears would have been standard in the Copo, but this one has a very slight upgrade. 433 rear gears. Weight of this Chevelle with driver is actually somewhat similar to the Roadrunner, 3,814 pounds. If you're any good at math, you already know that's a 30 pound advantage for the A12. If you knew how to get one, the Copa Chevelle was a really good deal in 1969. The base V8 started out at $2,690, the automatic transmission was 221 bucks, that G80 Posi in the rear was $42, and then the Copo pack was only 547 bucks. That gives you a grand total of $3,500 even, which is cheaper than the A12, and adjusting for inflation, it's only $26,507 today. With a screaming deal like that, you would think that Chevrolet would have sold tens of thousands of Copo Chevelles in 1969, but that just wasn't the case. There were only 323 produced in total, and only 96 had the automatic transmission. Superstock and Drag Illustrated tested a Yenko Copa Chevelle in 1969. It had a four-speed manual transmission, and it ran zero to 60 in only five 5.4 seconds 
and the quarter mile in 13.36 seconds at 108 miles per hour. Let's see what these cars can do on the strip today. And the Chevelle took off like a rocket, running 12.15 seconds at 114.69 miles per hour. But they did get a red light, and that gives the automatic win to the Roadrunner, who ran 12.36 seconds at 113.72 miles per hour. Let's check out round two and see if that Copo can even the score. All right, another 812 car, 69 Roadrunner, 446 Barrel. Mike Marple out of South Line, Michigan. Up against Jim Lair and Papa, Michigan, 69 Chevelle, Topo 427, Turbo 400. It used to be a 433 gear set in the Chevelle. Both cars stage, lights come down, and the big red eye. And in the second round, it's the Roadrunner that gets a red light, giving the automatic win to the Chevelle. You can tell that both of these owners know these cars are very evenly matched. They're trying to push those lights as much as possible. The Chevelle ran 12.20 seconds at 114.53 miles per hour. And in the other lane, the Roadrunner ran 13.07 seconds at 112.03 miles per hour. With this best of three tied one all, let's check out that final round. Uh, Looks to be Jim Laram, Papa, Michigan, 1969, Cobo Chevelle, 427. 1969, 446 Barrel Roadrunner. Roadrunner for the old guy. The wind does go to the full part, 1260. The wind does go to the full part, 1260. In the third round, the Roadrunner took an early lead with a .07 second reaction time. They were able to cross the finish line first, taking home the win. It ran 12.60 seconds at 113.39 miles per hour. In the other lane, the Chevelle had a quicker ET, but their reaction cost them this race. But they still looked very impressive, running 12.50 seconds at 113.69 miles per hour. And that's just how drag racing goes sometimes. A huge thanks to the owners for bringing out these cars. It was absolutely Absolutely awesome seeing them on the drag strip. Catch you guys at the next one.